All right, we're going to be talking about cell respiration today. And remember that cell respiration is going to be the breakdown of glucose in the presence of oxygen. And it's going to involve the steps of glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. I'm going to illustrate the process here on this model. So we start out with glucose sitting in the cytoplasm. At that point, our activation energy of 2 ATP is put into the molecule. That serves as the energy needed to split apart glucose. As glucose splits apart into two pyruvates, this releases four ATP, resulting in a net gain of two ATP molecules. At the same time, we have our NAD plus now become reduced and is now NADH. It will eventually travel over to the mitochondria and deposit its electron in the electron transport chain. Now as we move forward with our two pyruvates, as we transition into the matrix of the mitochondria, CO2 gets removed from the pyruvates and acetyl-CoA is formed as coenzyme A is added to the pyruvates. They transition into the matrix of the mitochondria, which would be the light gray areas inside. And as they transition through the Krebs cycle, they will be processed into four products. Carbon dioxide, more ATP, again, getting a reduced NADH, and an FADH2. Of those four products, two of them will proceed forward. The electron carriers that are reduced, they will deposit their electrons into the electron transport chain. As we head into the electron transport chain, our electrons will begin to move towards oxygen because it's the most electronegative and is the final electron acceptor. So they will travel across. The energy from those electrons will be used to pump hydrogen ions into the matrix, and those will flow from high to low through our turbine ATP synthase. As they come through the turbine, we have the formation of water, and we get the primary uh, output of energy 32 to 34 ATP. Hope you enjoyed.